Okay, so um, the topic, uh, where are we now in NLP versus where um, should we be? And then second, um, if, if I have any ideas on how do we get there? Um, so let me start. So where we are now, and, and Tim alluded to this, um, so maybe others will <laughs> have similar uh, initial slides. Um, we're in the era of large language models. Um, they've transformed the field, and that's no pun intended. Um, they've been trained on vast amounts of text uh, and have seemingly acquired linguistic capabilities. This is both for natural language interpretation um, as well as natural language generation and are able to encode world knowledge of various forms. Um, so, and and uh, in addition, language, the large language models are for the most part general purpose, and, and to my mind, that's a good thing. Um, so recently, and I think in the next upcoming years, um, it seems that a lot of NLP work is focused on first understanding exactly what is learned um, in these models via probing, prompting, and then a series of uh, black box workshops is a good place to look for info on that. Um, how exactly to adapt the large language models for specific NLP applications. Um, and this includes changes to the neural network modeling um, and also manipulation of, of training data and training schemes. So we're trying to, we've been trying to understand what exactly is learned in the models, how do we adapt them for specific NLP applications, um, and in particular, how to add what's missing. And this is uh, mostly in the form of knowledge, maybe domain-specific knowledge, task-specific knowledge, um, and reasoning skills, uh, for example, common sense uh, reasoning. So where should we be and how do we get there? Um, so I think that, you know, that depends. Um, are you interested in building NLP applications that really work uh, for end users, really practical stuff? Or are you interested in building true artificial intelligence systems that operate in the world as well as or better than people? Okay, so it, it may be disappointing, but I am mostly interested in the former. <laughs> but I am, I came from the, the, uh, the the bigger background, and so I'm also interested in the latter. And at the end, if you have questions um, on my opinions on that, um, you can ask. But for now, um, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to be focusing on um, the more practical natural language um, applications and, uh, and what's involved in that. And it's through my particular lens, which is one of um, information extraction. And I can see Ed Hovey holding his head. <laughs> so I'm not sure that's good. But um, so the goal in information extraction um, is to get computers to read text for us, extract and organize the relevant information it contains according to our needs. And so um, this audience um, already knows this. So where should we be? Uh, in, in terms of, um, of NLP today. So I thought, and this has been bugging me, uh, minimally we should be able to handle this old, old template filling task, um, essentially complex event extraction that was set out for the field in the early to mid 1990s. We should be able to do that. Um, what's the task? Um, this is from the 1991 um, uh, evaluation of information extraction systems. The, the domain of interest for these systems was uh, uh, terrorist event extraction, so we have terrorist events from Latin America. Um, what kinds of information were supposed to be extracted? Well, there were 18 different slots, roles, arguments, fields, um, things like the type of the incident, um, the date and location, um, who were the perpetrators, what terrorist organization were they from, what were the physical targets and human targets of the, of the attack, and what were the effects um, of the attack. So a real example, um, this is an input text uh, from those uh, days, all caps, annoyingly. Um, this was uh, from 1990 uh, from Bogota, and it's discussing uh, Senator Velez, um, who's described and referred to in various ways throughout the text. Um, and it's about his kidnapping, which is also mentioned um, in different ways throughout the text. Um, 
we know when it happened, basically. Uh, let's see here, and where it happened. Uh, the perpetrators were, the kidnappers were three heavily armed men, and they're referred to later uh, as well. So what actually just, okay, as the they. Um, the, the extraditables is the group that they're from, and so the output should look something like the following. So all of those under uh, bracketed items were things that were supposed to get extracted and potentially classified. Um, but in the output, you'll see the 18 slots. Uh, a bunch of them are really strings that were supposed to be extracted and descriptions of, um, of the entities uh, that were extracted. Um, other fields are classification-based, so they're taken from a, a fixed set of possible categories. Uh, still other fields um, were numeric or, or required some kind of normalization, so the location and time. Okay, so we should do this. <laughs> we should be able to do this. Uh, and we should be able to do it better than the early systems. So this is the, um, the top systems in, in this evaluation. They're getting about, um, precision is on the y-axis, uh, recall is on the x-axis. Top systems are getting about 40 to 50% recall, 55 to 65% um, precision. One thing to note is that building these systems really did take a long time. So uh, greater and sometimes much greater than one person year of effort um, to build a, a single uh, extraction system in a single domain. Okay. Um, Classification-based fields were easier, uh, so the, that's uh, slightly higher than the, than the overall scores. And um, the extraction-based fields were the ones that were harder. Um, so this is the, the, the original um, overall scores. If you look at three of the, partic uh, this, the string fills, um, you'll see that the, the numbers are a bit lower. Okay, so these were harder. So we hope maybe we're doing um, better on, on these. Um, and that's the score. So in, in general, the recall is much lower than, uh, than across all of the slots. Um, and the precision is sometimes higher for physical targets, but otherwise it's, um, it's, a, it's a bit lower. Okay, so there was a lot of room um, for improvement in that time. Uh, can today's systems do better? Uh, so remember, there really are uh, a, a, a lot of complex phenomena going on here. Um, in, in theory, at least, the systems need a, a lot of linguistic capabilities or subsystems, um, like parsing, semantic role filling, semantic tag, uh, tagging, lexicons of different sorts. Um, and the task is really document level extraction of entities and those are slot fillers, um, and of complex events where there's one template for each, each uh, relevant event in the text. Um, and so these, this in particular means we needed to do co-reference resolution. You have to do co-reference resolution um, for this task. Um, and it's hard also because relevant information can be spread across the document. And also, information mentioned once might be shared across different templates. So this was really, it's, it's really hard. Um, and again, a uh, huge person, uh, our time commitment to, um, to develop. So if you look at recent work on, an event, on event extraction, um, this is quite recent. Uh, these systems handle entity and event extraction using neural network techniques. Um, they do not involve NLP subcomponents, um, no feature engineering, and much faster development, and they're getting better or comparable performance to earlier machine learning-based approaches to the task. Um, the downside, of course, is that uh, it, it, more training data is, is much, much better, and sometimes that's not available. But this work in particular um, isn't actually handling the task uh, that was set out earlier. In particular, these systems are looking at extracting events within a single sentence. So you have to have a, an event trigger in the sentence, and then any of the slots 
that happen to um, any arguments of the event that appear within that sentence are to be extracted. But that's not document level information extraction. Um, it's not even close. So is the real work now on, I mean, this is, this is already pretty recent. <laughs> um, so is there work on document level information extraction? And there is, and it's all fairly, fairly new. Um, so uh, work out of UW, um, Wadden et al, uh, try to treat this task as, for, as, as finding all possible spans in the text and then finding relations among the spans uh, and classifying those relations. Um, uh, work from my group, we tried to treat the task as question answering, where each kind of, each slot fill was, um, uh, is, a, is a question, and we use systems to try to find the answers. Um, I should point out that all of this from here on is only gonna deal with the string fills, so the harder, the harder, um, the harder things to extract. Um, Paolini et al. did not design the system specifically for uh, information extraction. They have a general purpose text-to-text -text system. And so effectively, um, we looked at that uh, they, and use it to treat information extraction as a machine translation task. The input is a document, and then the output is, uh, is that document. Um, as if it's annotated with HTML <laughs> to indicate the templates and the slot fillers. Um, these systems, again, were not really designed for document level template extraction, but they can be coerced to do that. Um, some newer work uh, does this. Um, this is a work from one of my students, uh, Shinya Du, and also with uh, great help from Sasha Rush. Um, we looked at it in terms of a natural language generation task. And I'll, I'll tell you quickly uh, um, uh, how that works, just at a high level. Um, and then Hung, uh, Lee, is, is Hung here? No, 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 okay. Um, a, a lot of good work is coming out of Hung's group. In particular, um, is this new work in the end I really like, and uh, I'll maybe get a chance to explain why. So there is work, um, but how do we know whether it's, it's, um, it's working like uh, better or worse than the original systems? So let me give you a quick overview of, actually, what's the time here? Because I can skip the overview of the system because that doesn't... Really? <laughs> that, that, that's a lot. Okay, all right, so I'll give a quick overview of this, um, of the uh, information extraction as natural language generation, and then uh, we'll, we'll show you what happens if we do a head-to-head -head comparison with earlier systems. Okay, so what we're doing here, um, BIRD is the center of this uh, system. Um, the input will be a, a document, um, and then the output is essentially a linearization of the desired um, extracted, events extracted. Uh, initially assume there's just going to be one event in a document, but th there'll actually be more. Um, and I'll show how this, um, this is actually uh, made to work. Um, so we have BERT. Um, BERT for us is a little bit odd, um, but we're using it a single BERT system uh, as both the encoder and decoder, and, um, and they'll get trained together. So in terms of, um, of method, this is uh, an interesting piece. Uh, input for training and for test is the document. Um, I'm sorry, these brackets should not be there. In the output, um, the, the idea is that we will have a fixed ordering on all of the roles associated with a particular event type. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, a particular uh, set of events. So there's a fixed ordering of the roles, and then the system has to first produce all of the slot fillers for the first role, followed by a separator, then all of the slot fillers associated with the second role, and so on. We don't extract the whole string. Um, the system will just identify the index of the first word in the extracted string and the last word in the extracted string. But it's a, a format that then you can uh, recreate the output templates uh, directly um, and very easily. 
Um, we, we didn't actually think this would work, um, but it, work, it works okay. Uh, input um, uh, will be the whole text. Uh, the output is done um, auto-regressively. Um, we we'll first output the, the first roles entities. Um, and here it was uh, uh, two men, so this is the perpetrators are first. Um, their organization uh, second. Um, each time we take what we've just output and use that to uh, start the next, and it continues like this in the, for the generation. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, the, the encoder decoder in, in a single model is a little interesting. It's not new, um, but a masking strategy uh, enables this generative learning property with a single um, transformer and no additional parameterization. All right, it does extend to multiple templates, um, and the only thing that's different is that we'll first, uh, we assume that we'll, we're looking for all different, um, our, a fixed set of types of events, and the system is trained to produce all of, say, the attacks first, in the way I just described, one after another, and then all of the bombings, and then all, of the, all the way through the, the possible event types. Uh, and this is called GTT, and so you'll see this in the, um, in the results. All right, so we looked at the MUC4 data set. Um, this is uh, based on the MUC3 data set that you saw results for before. Um, it has 1,300 documents for training, um, 200 for development, 200 for test set. Um, and we'll show a comparison to the top performing MUC4 systems from 1992, um, along with um, not just our system, but uh, a couple of the others that, that, we, that I mentioned earlier. Um, how do we do this? Uh, so with the, there's, this, there's new work that we have on automating error analysis for document level event extraction. And what we're, we're trying to do is make it easy for people to compare systems. Um, uh, so you can take a look at that if you want. Um, here's the results. So at the top, you'll see four systems that were among the top from MUC4. Um, the GE system is uh, by far the best there. Um, and these are the new systems. Ours is the GTT. The DIG++ is the span-based architecture. And then TANL is this uh, uh, approach that treats information extraction as machine translation. So input document uh, gets translated into an HTML version of it with the HTML that actually um, indicates the, uh, the templates and the structure. And what do we see? Uh, it's, we're, we're not as good as the best system back then. That's, that's, that's a little disappointing. Um, uh, the best of the early models performs better than any of the new models. Uh, it does a better job balancing precision and recall. Uh, the neural network models exhibit much higher precision and much lower recall, which is not what I had expected um, in the recent, in recent work. We would see that the neural network models uh, were better at recall, uh, but that's not the case for here. Um, a part of the, the new work is uh, looking more closely at the different types of errors that systems can make. Um, and so in here you'll see um, the early, well, let me just do this. So the black line is showing all of the older systems. Um, the new systems are at the top, and then we just got these new results like last week. Um, this is the machine translation-based system, and so it's at the bottom. Uh, what do we see? So span errors, whoops, let me go back. I can't go back. Um, the early models have more span errors. So span errors are these orange, um, the orange blocks. So they're not finding spans as good as, uh, as, as well as the new systems. Um, the early models have fewer missing templates and fewer missing role fillers. 
um, those are the, the, the dark green and the light green at the far end. Uh, at, at the same time, they also have more spurious templates and spurious roll fillers, and that, those are the pink uh, items in the, in the middle. Um, and they have fewer incorrect roll errors, uh, but there's hardly any incorrect roll errors. They're in these little blue areas. So both systems are finding correct um, roll fillers well. The main source of error uh, for both early and the, and the new systems is low recall because of missing templates and missing roll fillers. Okay, so how do we get there? So this, was, this is a little disappointing. Um, uh, so one of the things that's really nice, though, is that these, the new systems are easier to train and to build. There's, uh, it's not a, a person-year effort. Um, we, we can train them uh, quite quickly, given some training data. But how do we get there? Um, I think that we have to focus on discourse-level natural language understanding tasks a lot more than has been done so far and solve the relevant neural network modeling and representation issues. Um, so this is not just for document-level event extraction, but there's a lot of tasks that are having the same problems, document-level information extraction in general, not just events. Um, anything at the corpus level, um, so things for knowledge-based population, for example, have to understand things at the document level before they can handle them at the corpus level, question answering tasks that require reasoning, argument interpretation and generation, dialogue understanding falls into this category as well, narrative interpretation, so interp interpreting novels, um, uh, summarizing novels, uh, long document summarization, all of these are issue, are, are systems, are tasks where discourse level representation is key. Um, and uh, there hasn't been enough work in that uh, so far. So what are the document level representations that we need in order to handle these tasks better? Um, and how can we get the neural network um, um, modeling systems to en encode that and to incorporate some of the discourse constraints that help us to um, that help people to perform these tasks. How do we get there? I don't know, but I, I like always looking at relevant research from other fields to see how the, they handle, um, in particular, these modeling um, decisions. So cognitive science, uh, psychology and social psychology, um, linguistics, in particular work on um, theories of pragmatics um, and sociology. So that is the end, there's no end slide either. <laughs> uh, but thanks for uh, First of all, thank you very much. <laughs> um, so there are some interconnections to my talk uh, later uh, during the day. So there is a growing body of research on long document uh, transformers of all kinds. So yeah. don't they provide some relevant input to this? And if not, uh, what are the main bottlenecks from your point of view? Yeah, so um, uh, we've looked at some of the long document um, uh, systems, so the systems that, that will handle more than 512 tokens. Um, and they're really designed to make it possible to just have a longer document, but they're not doing anything specific in terms of representation, nothing. And so there's the higher level representations that we need to, for example, do co-reference well or recognize multiple events and their connections. It's just it's not there. So um, what about pre-training on relevant tasks or injecting some sort of discourse structure? So that's the kind of stuff that I think that we need to do much better. Um, Thank you. Thanks. So following on from that question, there's sort of two responses one could imagine, right? One is you need more training data because I imagine you just had a few thousand documents. And the other one is exactly what you said, having deeper representations 
and starting to go deeper than just the surface level and starting to tie things together at some semantic, whatever that means, level, right? That's where also my talk is going to go. Seems to be like the right thing to do. These machines work at the surface level almost exclusively. They do a tiny bit of generalization. Yeah, yeah. We shouldn't expect that they do any better than just that. Yeah, no, that, I, think that's, I think that's right. The fact that they do is, is kind of amazing. Um, so we, do, we did look at a couple of other, there's only, there aren't that many good document level um, information extraction data sets. So we looked at two others, um, uh, one of which has less training data than, than the mock system, the mock task, and one that has much more. Um, and the results are quite, are quite similar um, uh, for the new systems. Now we can't compare the old systems uh, on the new data sets because they don't exist. Um, but we're seeing this similar trend even when we have more training data. Um, have we lost anything in this move from human-based, or like systems that took a lot of human time to create to these transform-based systems? Or what have we lost? What have we lost? So, I mean, I, I guess if you, you saw that was, there, was just, there was just this one system that was really, really good. The rest were quite a bit below that. Um, uh, there's a lot of engineering that can, that can be done if you really know the domain and, um, uh, and you've worked on it for many years, like that group. And so if you, there's the, if you have enough time, I think you can probably make uh, just, maybe not neural network systems, but machine learning based systems uh, do much better than the older systems, but it, will, it would take effort. So uh, I'm, I was, I'm puzzled by your observation that uh, um, transformers give you high precision and lower recall, and I'm wondering whether this can be due to the difference in the time when uh, the kind of the timing between the documents that we are looking into, because typically for information extraction, you have these old uh, documents from 20 years ago or something, uh, and those are completely different events, uh -huh. and, and the, uh, uh, the transformer models are, are trained on much more contemporary language. And I'm just wondering kind of uh, what are your thoughts on this, this diachronic shift between the two? So that's, that's a good point. Um, it, uh, it, it could be a function of uh, the mismatch in training data, although I suspect there's a lot of old text that was also used to train BERT, for example. Um, and another, another problem uh, that could ex explain some, but not all, is that the, um, these, that particular data set, the MUC data set, um, I think that there, are, there isn't consistent uh, span annotations. Um, so I think there are things that we might consider to be errors in the train in the data, both testing data and training data, and that that's causing a um, uh, causing some some problems. Although that would also affect precision. So no answers. So Claire, thanks for the talk. You mentioned co-reference as a key task in the subtask of the. Uh, of the MAC task. And that seems to be a case where the, the, the technique of looking at the whole document is bound to break down in uh, long document situations. And as you say, the new long document techniques don't seem to really address it. And one of the ideas that was very strong in the early days of co-reference was incrementality, that we're actually sort of changing our model as we go through the document. Do you think there's a place for that kind of model? And do you, do you, do you see a way to bring that back into the neural models uh, that we're looking at at the moment? Yeah, so I think that's a great idea. Um, I, I guess there are some pieces of that that are out there already. So um, uh, explicitly having a memory on the side that can up be updated incrementally as the text is processed. Um, could be one way to get around that. Um, and th I think that would be a good, a good thing to look at. Excellent point. Uh, 
perhaps let me sneak in one question while we're setting up uh, Mark's slides. Um, uh, I don't know if you agree with this character characterization of kind of the reflections on Mark, but uh, my interpretation is you, know, you, you had some very different tasks from year to year, and each year they, they kind of had to, sort of had to start over. Uh, and sort of, uh, after how many iterations it was of that, eight or nine, I can't remember the number. A few. Uh, yeah. The, the, the sort of feeling was, well, hang on, have, what have we learned in terms of more general principles of IE? And the answer was, well, not a lot, because we had to sort of do over each time. I, I wonder, in, in terms of sort of uh, transfer from these sort of very different verticals in terms of specific MUC IE tasks from one year to the next, with the, the more recent models, um, you know, whether it's sort of simple multitask learning or, or something more sophisticated than that, um, I mean, is there at least a potential for that to carry over from one year to the next, which wasn't part possible? And realizing that they, they were very yeah, different yeah. information extraction tasks, but at least uh, sensitizing our models, uh, yeah, modern models, it's easier to sort of sensitize them to well, what is a, a slot and what is a role? Right. Sort of more general principles, I guess. Of, right, of right, right. I mean, do you think there are any links to that idea? I think that's an excellent. I didn't. I never thought of that. So. I'm happy I came to Abu Dhabi. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, so multitask, um, so having using multiple information extraction data sets yeah. uh, as pre-training or some additional training, uh, that, that, I don't know what that will help exactly yeah. with, but it, it could help with, um, with exactly the, 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 these discourse issues, yeah. at right. least a bit. Yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, join me in thanking Claire again for a sparkling talk. <laughs>